of our Algebra 2 semester review. So I'm hoping you saw part one where we went through a one through nine on the semester review. And so this video is going to focus on 10 through 17. If we haven't met before, hi, my name is Dr. May, and I'll be along here to give you all the tips and strategies that you need to answer all of those questions. Now, before we get started, let's make sure you have your document in front of you, as well as something to write with. You'll also want to probably open Desmos Graphing Calculator. Now, if you haven't... Um, use Desmos before. I'm linking it below in the description so that you can just click on it and open up your Desmos calculator. It's going to look something like this. And when we get there, I'll change our view over so that you can see it. But for now, we're going to start on our document here and we'll start taking a look at each of these questions. So let's look at number 10. So is the relationship of the variables in a, the table a direct variation, an inverse variation, both or neither? So friends, what I want you to do on this one is I want you to look at the pattern, okay? So I want you to see that X goes up by 2. I want you to see that X goes up by 46. I want you to see that X goes down by 20. So I put negative 20. Then I want you to look at the Y's. I want you to see that Y goes up by 2. I want you to see that the X's go down by 46. And then I, I'm sorry, the Y's go down by 46. And I want you to see that the Y's go down by 2. Now, what I want you to do is to stack the change in Y over the change in X here. So when I do that, so the change in Y is 20 over 2. And the change in uh, the next change in Y would be negative 46 over 46. And the change in Y here would be negative 2 and negative 20. Okay, so the question is, are these all equal? If they're equal, then we stand a chance that they could be direct variation. If they don't, then we have to say neither. And if they're inverse variation, then they also would have to be equal, but they would have to, we would have to look further at it. So since they are not equal, we have to say that it is neither. So you're really looking for those patterns in this problem to be able to say if it's direct, inverse, or neither. Okay, let's look at problem number 11 then. The rowing club is renting a bus for a field trip. The cost of the bus is $7.50. If the students who attend the field trip share the cost of the bus equally, write a function that represents the cost C per student with re respect to the number of students in who attend. So they're going to divide up, notice the keyword, they're going to divide up the cost of the bus. So the cost per student is going to be the $7.50 divided by N, the number of students. That's your function that you're looking for. And then part two, that was part one. Part two of this question says, okay, how many students must ride the bus to make the cost C no more than, that's less than or equal to $20 each. So we want C to be less than, and I'm writing it um, as a greater than because it's actually written backwards. So let me write it the other way. We want the cost to be less than or equal to 20. Now, in order to solve, we want to multiply both sides by n to get that n off of the denominator. And so I've got 750 is less than or equal to 20n. And then, and to get the 20, or sorry, the n by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 20. And so N equals, and this I want you to punch in your calculator, that gives me 37.5. And sorry, I missed that here. So I know N has to be slightly higher than this, so we need 38 students. And that was our warning here that we make sure that because of rounding, we don't want the cost per student to be more than $20. That's why we need that extra student there. All right, let's look at number 12 here then. We've got a fifth root. I want you to pay attention to that. 
I'm going to rewrite this, um, what is underneath the radical here. I like to do a little factor tree with the 32 because I know 32 is 2 times 16. And then I know that 16 is 2 times 8, and 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So I'm hoping you remember your little factor trees. So I've really got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got 2 to the 5th, x to the 15th, y to the 20th, all being raised to the 1 5th power. Now you may say, Dr. May, how do you know that is to the 1 5th power? Well, friends, when I have this root of 5, that means 1 5th power. So the good part is we can multiply exponents. So I've got 2 to the 5 times 1 5th and x to the 15 times 1 5th and y to the 20th times 1 5th. If you multiply those together, you'll get 2 to the 1st, x to the 15 over 3 gives me, 15 over 5 gives me 3, and y to the 20 over 5 gives me 4. So we end up with 2x to the 3rd, y to the 4th here. So keep practicing. Use that factor tree. I've, uh, you know, I know it's been a while probably since you've done one, but it really makes it super nice. Now, this one I want to do with Desmos because I just want to change it up a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to switch this over to Desmos here because I want to uh, type this one in. So I've got 81, I'm just typing that normal. Now, caret, you're going to do shift 6 to raise us to the exponent. Then I want you to do 1 divided by 4. And friends, look at that. Desmos did all of that for us. I love, love that. Okay? So I want you to make sure you do 81 caret 1 divided by 4 in Desmos. Now, make sure, because we're giving extra credit for this review, I want to make sure you get credit for the work done. I need you to write down that step right there. One, because I want you to remember how to write it in there. And two, because I want you to get credit for the extra credit. So make sure you've got that step written down. It's going to really help you when you get ready to take the exam because you'll remember how to type that. And even if you need to write a little note that says shift six in order to get that caret, that's a nice um, addition to your notes as well. Let's keep going then for number 14. And this is a good graphing one. So you know we're going back to Desmos. So let me change our view so you can see that. I'm going to type this in as the square root. Now, in order to do that in Desmos, you have to type SQRT. There you go. And we've got to put x minus 5 in there. So notice this little shape of graph. You've got a point at 5, 0. Let's see what you get at 6. You can click on it, and Desmos will give you 6, 1. Okay. So what I would do on my graph, on my grid over here, is you're going to need to draw axes, because we didn't draw you any. Forgive my non-straight lines. Okay, so you're just going to draw yourself some axes on here. Ta-da, X and Y. And then I want you to plot those points we got from Desmos. Remember, we got 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. And we got 6, 1, 6, 1. And then my graph did something like this. Okay, but realize we went over here and got those points from Desmos, okay? So I'm just clicking on it so it will show me the exact coordinate. And that's how you use Desmos to your fullest potential, okay? You put it in Desmos, but you have to be able to know how to interpret getting from Desmos onto your exam. So take a minute and look at that. I think that's going to be super helpful for you. All right, let's look at number 15 then. All right, an initial population of 325 deer increases at an annual rate of 5%. Write an exponential function to model the population of the deer. So friends, we're going to write a just a general formula. Okay, I'm writing this plus or minus because you can actually use this formula with, if the population increases 
or it decreases. So in this case, because it increases, we're going to use the plus, obviously. And your A, this is your initial amount. So that's your 325 deer. So let's make a little note. A is 325. And you might want to just put, this is the initial amount. Okay. And then the R is your rate. And in this case, that's 0.05. Now notice I had to change that 5% to a decimal. That's important. So make sure you've got it as a decimal. So I've got 325, and then I've got 1 plus 0 0.05 to the T. You'll want to go ahead and add those two values together. That'll give you 1.05 to the T. And that's going to be your function. That's your exponential function. That's your number one here. And then number two says, right, what will the approximate population be after three years? So let's do that. We're going to say T is three. So we're going to put three in for T in our formula. And you're going to go back to Desmos to type this value in to find the value. So I'm going to clear this here. You're going to type 325, parentheses, 1.05, close parentheses, then do your caret, and then type your 3. You'll need to round according to whatever the uh, instructions say to do. So if the instructions say round to the nearest whole animal, then of course you would do 376. Um, if it asks for, which would be highly unusual, to round to the nearest tenth, you could do that as well. All right, let's switch back over and look at question number 16. Now, question number 16 is a logarithm question, and I can already feel some of you cringing. Please don't cringe. We're going to use our calculator to help us with this, but I need you to get a formula down for me, okay? When we want to use the calculator for a logarithm, you have to do a division problem, okay? So I put logs on top and bottom of a fraction. The top number, I'm sorry, the big number goes on top. The bottom or the small number goes on the bottom. Now, please, please do not divide 1,024 by 4. That is not how it works. We have to type in log of 1024, notice I used parentheses, divide by log of 4. So let me switch us to Desmos so you can see how I'll type that in, clear that out. I'm going to type in log of 1024, divide by, make sure I've got my parentheses in the right place, log of 4, and friends, there is my answer. Okay, but you've got to get that formula down because you'll get them in the wrong place if you're not careful. Make sure that you've got that big number on the top of with a log and you've got that small number on the bottom with a log. All right, last one. And we get to use the same formula. So this is really good. So let's recap. We're going to change what we call this a change of base formula. So we've got a log on top and a log on bottom. We've got the big number going on top. That's 32. We've got the little number going on bottom. That's 5. And remember how we're going to type it in. Log of 32. Notice the parentheses. Divide by log of 5. Again, notice the parentheses. I'm going to switch this to Desmos so you can see me type that in. I've got log of 32 using my parentheses, then divide by log of 5. And notice the instructions say to round to the nearest tenth. That means one decimal place. So I'm going to get 2.2 .2 here. 
So let's recap. I hope that you got all of the problems here. The beauty of this is you can go back and watch them again. Make sure you have notes written on every one of them, even the ones that I did on Desmos. I wrote some notes down for our study guide so that you'll get credit for the extra credit. Now, if you're ready for part three, I'm going to link it below in the description um, so that you can easily access it. And uh, friends, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.